Hello everyone and welcome to another Sunday afternoon chat on what looks like and probably will be a rainy Sunday night here in Oklahoma. Uh, it is just, you can almost feel the moisture in the air right now. It is, uh, it's cool, it's not cold, it's about 50 degrees and uh, when we come home from church, actually the sun was shining a little bit and it was a really nice warm 50 degrees. It is a pretty chilly 50 degrees right now, I got to tell you that. But but they are talking about maybe a half inch, three quarter inch, maybe even an inch of rain tonight. Now, wouldn't it be something an inch of rain? We need it really, really badly here in southern Oklahoma, I promise you. Some of you got a little more rain, you can say grace over. I know that. Some of you got a lot more snow then you can say grace over, I know that. But we need a little rain here in southern Oklahoma. We've had another great week, as always. Uh, didn't leave the ranch much at all this week, except to go to church this morning. Uh, but we had a lot of night, we had a great week. We had a lot of things happen. We did leave the ranch on Wednesday. I, I went and got my COVID-19 vaccination, had absolutely no side effects whatsoever. You know, I put a little vid up on that, uh, that we put up, I think Thursday night, just kind of, just sharing t with y'all what it was like to get that vaccination. And uh, Chris had hers a week earlier, or what it was like for her to get that vaccination. She had hers done at the Cherokee Nation. I had mine done over in uh, Durant, Oklahoma, at uh, the Performing Arts Center over there. And, and the, they were, the people were just wonderful. The nurses were great. The volunteers were great. I talked to six or eight different people during the process. It was just smooth as silk. And it was just uh, it, it's, <laughs> <clears throat> is a piece of cake. That's just what it was, a piece of cake. There's no doubt about it. Chris said she had the same experience with the Cherokee Nation over in Muskogee, Oklahoma. The only drawback, I had to drive about 60 miles to get my shot. Uh, Chris had to drive about 150 one way to get her shot. I drove about 60 one way, uh, one way to get mine. But the other thing about it was, since we're out, and you know, Jimmy doesn't get out very much if he doesn't have to. Uh, you know, we're not filming much right now, and, but we're going to start filming here pretty quickly as soon as I can get that devotional book done. And uh, running around the country a whole lot more. The next time I'll really have to leave the state is going to be February 6th. We'll be over at uh, Cross Trail Outfitters at the uh, Bass Pro Shop Wonders of Wildlife Museum for an event on the night of February 6th. I think they only are allowing 450 people to go to that event. So if you're over there around Springfield, Missouri, and you want to go to that event that night, uh, I don't know exactly what all I have. I think they'll have a dinner, and, and they're, they're raising funds to help the kids. At Cross Trail Outfitters is a great, great organization. Uh, my buddy Jeff Shaw at O'Reilly helps them quite a bit, and they just they help a lot of kids. That's the biggest thing that, that they do. But it's a great organization but they're, they're only going to limit that to 450 because of the COVID. But, uh, but, but we got to get out a little bit, and since we were out already, I told Chris, I said, uh, let's uh, run down to Lowe's in Ardmore since we're over here in this area. Uh, let's run down to Lowe's in Ardmore and buy a new icebox. <laughs> Do you hear what I said? <laughs> I know some of you th said, what do you say? Buy a new icebox. Uh, an icebox is what uh, people my age call a refrigerator. And uh, my grandkids, when I say go get something out of the icebox, they look at me like I'm just plum loco, which they look at me a lot like that anyway. So I don't worry about that too much. But some of you know that that's what we always called an icebox, was an icebox. And to be honest with you, I'm not quite old enough to know that when they put ice in that box to keep everything else cold uh, in houses, uh, <laughs> we had actual we called them ice boxes, but they were electric refrigerators when I was a kid. So I miss that stage of when you actually got a, a big block of ice, 25 pounds or so, and put in your ice box that would keep all of your other stuff warm. We do that now, or, or cold. Uh, we do that now, of course, with uh, with uh, Orion boxes and Yetis and stuff like that, but uh, Coleman's and all of those different kind of what ice chests they call them now. But uh, we call a refrigerator an ice box. We bought us a new Frigidaire, and uh, it's got nice two doors. And it's, you got, you know, a bunch of stuff in there. We have so many guests here at the ranch. We have so much family comes down all the time that a lot of times we just don't have enough room to put all the food. And uh, that's a good problem to have is not enough room to put all the food because it means that you have a lot of food. And uh, and so we do, and we have a lot of people here and a lot of family. We do have a lot of food. And, and so we moved uh, the icebox that we had. We moved it around the corner, and we we're waiting on them to deliver the other refrigerator now, they were supposed to deliver that yesterday. We stayed and waited all day yesterday. They never showed up. Uh, they were supposed to deliver it today by 1 o'clock, and they still have not shown up. But uh, my guess is they're not even going to get here today. I'm just saying, but that's okay. I don't know. Little things like that really don't bother me too much. So we got a new 
ice chest coming. We got a new uh, refrigerator. We have a new ice box. So it's uh, really a cool one. It's really cool and it does all the cool things that everything does. Uh, I didn't get to fish hardly any at all. I did walk down here to the dock about four different times this week. I didn't get to come yesterday. I'll tell you what I was doing yesterday. In fact, we're going to take you on a little walk with us. But uh, but uh, I did get to come down here and fish uh, off the dock a little bit, maybe 30 minutes or an hour or four different days. I've caught a total of four bass. <laughs> That's it, four bass, that's all. I caught every single solitary one of them on a jig, uh, on a Lucky Strike half ounce jig uh, with a, a little crawfish trailer on it. Uh, I did have uh, another bite that I set the hook on and it yeah, broke my line. So uh, one of the fish was about four pounds, one of the fish was about five and a half, the other two were under two pounds. So that is my fishing from the, uh, from the dock here so far this year. There are no fish swimming around within casting distance of this dock to speak of. There are a few, but there are very few, trust me. But let me tell you, we get a few shad get around this dock, there'll be some fish come in here. We might play that game like we did a couple years ago and come down here and see how many casts it takes Jimmy before he can catch a fish and do a little contest, give away some spinner baits or lucky strike lures or something like that. Maybe some of the new mimics. But, uh, but the, we, we had a lot of fun with that. I think that was last year. Uh, some days you'd catch one in like three or four throws. Some days it would take 40 or 50 throws. But it was kind of a cool. We did that live and we let y'all guess, uh, let y'all guess how many casts it would take and how big the fish was. And it was pretty good, y'all. Some of you got really, really close. But anyway, so that was a great thing. We got to do that. We got to fish just a little bit. Uh, we are going to take uh, one day this, this coming week, even though we're trying to get that devotional book done. Uh, we're going to take one day, and Pat's coming down. We're going to shoot some videos for y'all. Uh, I don't know exactly what all we sh we'll shoot. I got my new Tracker 175. I got a brand new one, Tracker 175. Finally got that boat in. I've been waiting on those Garmin locators. They finally came in. We got them on there, and uh, and the boat is completely rigged and ready to go I'm gonna keep it in the down here in the dock quite a bit <clears throat> that's the boat I use where I want to run down there put the boat down the water push it out and start chunking and winding that's the boat I use that tracker 175 and it is a Cadillac out tracker 175 I want to do a walk, tracker walk through on that that is the number one selling fishing boat in the world a tracker 175 and I'll, uh, I'll try to look up and see kind of what the price ranges are on it too so I can give you a little bit more information uh, probably going to do uh, a video this week on on the new Blaze Series rods, maybe run through all the different uh, colors and actions and, and spinning rods, casting rods, and talk about them. Probably wine line on a few of them because I do have some new rods coming in. So we might do a little wine lining and rod looking. Might do a video on that. Also, I want to fix me up a tackle box. We're down here at the, the pier. Since we get to fish down here at the pier quite a bit this year, since we're not running around doing nearly as many personal appearances or fishing uh, tournaments like we have done in the past, I've got more time here at home, which is just wonderful to me. I think it's just fantastic, even though it seems like I never get things caught up. I've always got things to do. We still got to put the floor in that second building. The first building is beautiful. Uh, we might shoot that video out of that first building, so uh, we'll show that new floor off. That new Swiss Tracks floor is just just amazing. But we're going to put me together a dock tackle box that I've got a, a box that I, I picked up at Tractor Supply, and uh, and I'll be able to uh, I'll be able to uh, to fasten it down here to the dock or or to the picnic table or something here on the deck and and I'm gonna put quite a few different tackle boxes in it so might run out there and let you let you help me pick out all the tackle that we use on that uh, another video that I think we might show tomorrow night or maybe Wednesday night I did spend four hours in the woods yesterday looking for Milburn four hours in the woods yesterday looking for Milburn Lucy went with me and Beamer went with me and we walked and we walked and we walked and we walked and we'll take you on that walk with us a little bit where you can see walking around through the woods for we walked uh, a couple two or three miles away from the house and back and uh, make a long story short we found no Milburn but we didn't find a body either we didn't find uh, it, it, where Milburn had been killed so that, that's a good thing right there now uh, this is a big ranch a couple thousand acres so we obviously didn't get a chance to look at all of it we have not looked on the other side of the lake but, but I'm gonna do that I'm gonna be doing that I'm gonna go over and look on the other side of the lake so uh, that was about a four-hour search and and uh, we are gonna have a, I just took my phone out and shot some videos talking about what we were doing and some videos we was walking through the woods it's kind of nice just to walk through the woods uh, on a Saturday and enjoy what God created out there. It's just really nice. And so y'all might enjoy taking that walk with me. Uh, our new devotional book, uh, The Catch of the Day, or, or whatever we're going to call the new one. I have written all 365 devotions. I'm in the process now writing the tips. I've probably got 
oh, maybe a hundred tips written. Uh, it's real. <laughs> it's really hard to write fishing tips and try to remember back if you've already written that fishing tip, tip before, especially when you're reading fishing tips out of this every single day on our Catch of the Day channel. By the way, if you are not subscribed to that Catch of the Day channel, Go on there and subscribe to that Catch of the Day channel. We have 11,000 subscribers on there, about 3,500 a day. Uh, listen to the video that we do. We put it up every morning at 5 o'clock. That day's devotion, that day's scripture, and that day's fishing tip. You will learn a lot about fishing. You'll grow closer to the Lord. It's probably, of all the channels you're subscribed to, it will probably be the most important channel that you subscribe to. But, uh, but so we're, we're getting close to on that, getting that other book finished, and that's going to free up a lot of my time for a lot of other things that really I need to do. And, of course, we're not too far off from, by golly, just having to go fishing about every day. Uh, my buddy Josh Jones is fishing every day, and he's hammering those big ones. He sent me a picture this week of a 1222. I saw a picture of one I guess he caught today. He didn't put up how big it was, but it looked like 10 or 11 or 12 pounds. It was a, another really, really big fish. But, uh, but anyway, so we're, uh, uh, we're going to get a chance to go fishing, but we've got a lot to do in the month of February, and uh, the fishing really... Uh, it's not all that great in February. We may run down to Florida or go run down to Georgia and fish Bienville Plantation for a couple, two, three days. I don't know. We we got to get uh, we got to get out there and 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 and, and we just got to go fishing. I'm just about to go crazy uh, wanting to go fishing. We're having such beautiful weather here in Oklahoma. You know, we're having 40 and 50 and 60 degree high temperatures pretty much every single day. It's 50 degrees out here right now. Well, it's falling down to about 47 or 48, but we're having 40 and 50 and 60 degree days in southern Oklahoma almost every day. Now, that's really great temperatures for January, and uh, we're getting awful close to February. Once we hit about February 15th in Oklahoma, that sort of a turns a page on winter going to be over. We'll have a lot of really cold days after that and a lot of nasty days, but that sort of turns the page. The days are getting longer. You start having a few more warm days than you do cold days, and uh, you turn that page about February 15th, and pretty soon you know it, it's March, and then it's March 15th, and then you go out there and you throw your trolling motor down in the water, and you look, and it's 60, 65 degree water temp. So uh, that's just around the corner. It's very, very close. I know everybody is, uh, is really... Uh, Really, really, really anxious for that. And I know, I know I'm anxious too. So uh, anyway, we got a great week planned this week. We're going to try to do as many videos as we can. I'm going to kind of look back through some of the ideas that y'all had and some videos you wanted to see me do uh, where we could just kind of talk about how to, how to, how to help you catch more fish and, and, uh, and, and how to have more fun out there this, this coming year. And so we're going to try to get as many videos we can done on, get done on Tuesday. It's supposed to be like the coldest day of the week, so we'll probably do them out in the building. We may run out and fish a little bit too. I don't know. Uh, a lot depends on what time Pat gets down here on Tuesday morning. Uh, he's got a real fun thing planned for the end of the week. It's called a colonoscopy. And uh, my buddy uh, Dale Burrell of Burrell Archery Targets, he said he just does those for, uh, for the fun of it when he gets bored. <laughs> So Pat's really looking forward to that. Uh, I'm going to end here this week, and, and uh, you know, a lot of people think that uh, so many bad things are going on in America now that, um, that, that it's just everybody's kind of running around with their head down a little bit. Can I tell you, the good people have just got to be better. That's what it is. There's a lot of evil that has gone on and is going on in the United States. Uh, we had uh, the Antifa people and Black Lives Matter people again out in their favorite part of the country, uh, Portland and Seattle and those kind of places out there burning down businesses and breaking windows and setting American flags on fire and, and just being uh, downright un-American. That's all there is to it. Uh, but this is the time right now, folks, for the good Americans to really stand up and be proud to be an American. And I know that we've got a government that's kind of going the other way right now, and they're kind of saying that uh, we shouldn't be proud of America. We should be ashamed of America. Uh, they're talking about, uh, uh, you know, one world alliances and becoming, you know, letting all the people come into the United States and be America just not be, really America just be a part of Europe and not America. But this is the time when good Americans, when God-loving Americans, when God-fearing Americans, we have to stand out. We've got to walk around with smiles on our faces. We've got to be praying and talking to our God every single day, asking Him, Lord, I know that in order for you to bless America, we've got to bless you. And this I believe. I believe this in a big way. You know, uh, we continually ask God to bless America. And by golly, He's done that. I mean, we're the longest standing 
uh, form of government in the history of the world except the Ming Dynasty. And I know they're trying to change that. I know they're trying to change that into a Marxist government, a, a one-party government, and they're trying to just have it where they have elections like they do in, in, in communist China and Russia, but the elections don't mean anything. It's a predetermined deal. And, and if you don't believe the way they believe, they want to indoctrinate you and, and deprogram you and make you believe differently. But what we believe in America is we believe in America. That's what we believe. And, uh, and we believe in God. And we need to ask God's help. That Christians need to be praying more than ever. We need to be walking around with smiles on our face more than ever. We need to be saying nice things about people more than ever. We need to be speaking life into this country. There's a lot of them out there talking about the long, dark, gloom winter and how bad America is and how racist we are. And let me tell you, Americans are good people. Uh, Americans are great people. There's 360 million of us here, so if there's one or two percent bad, it's going to be a lot of folks. And they're going to go around burning up cities and, 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 and talking about how bad things are. But, but America is still the greatest country in the world. God is the only God there is in the world. And He blesses America when we bless Him. So we want to go around blessing each other. We want to go around blessing God. And I tell you what, when we do that, God's going to bless us individually. Here's what Christians got to do out there. Here's what good Americans, even if you're a non-Christian, even if you don't believe in God, even if Jesus is not your Lord and Savior, but you believe in America, you believe we've got a great country, go out there with a smile on your face, help your brother, help your neighbor, help your friend out there that you know he doesn't believe anything that you believe about America and he doesn't have anything to do with whatever you believe in politics. He's totally opposite. Bless him. Be happy for him. Encourage him. Witness to him. And just be a, a good person. Just be a good friend, a good neighbor, a good employee. Be a good husband. Be a good wife. Be a good father. Be a good son. Uh, we live in the greatest country of the world. And you know what makes it good? It's not just because we're the United States. It's because we're the people of the United States of America. And so what I'm asking, because I don't, I'm telling you, I, I just don't believe we have very many people that are on Jimmy Houston Outdoors or the Bat Catch of the Day channel or the half a million plus that's on our Facebook. I just don't believe there's many people on there that are not good people. They just don't fool around watching something like a guy like me that's just running out there, a poor country fisherman, having a great time and enjoying life every day. Only been married to one woman. Oh my gosh, say woman all my life. And uh, taking care of deer and animals and fish and spending every penny I can make to take care of them. Uh, I just don't believe there's very many bad people that are on Jimmy Houston Outdoors Facebook and Jimmy Houston Outdoors YouTube. So go out there this week. Show everybody you come in contact with what a good person really is. What a good person really is. Smile at them. Tell them good morning. Tell them good afternoon. Tell them you're hoping you're having a good day. Pray for them. Pray for America. Pray for our government. <laughs> as bad as it is, it may be better than some of it in the world. I don't know, but it might be. But pray for our government. Pray for our people. And ask God to continue to bless America. If we bless God, I really believe he's going to continue to bless America. I love this country. I love this land. I love America. Not only that, I love Americans. Guys and girls, go out there and have you a great week today. Keep a smile on your face. Make every day a fantastic day. Not only for you, but for everybody that you come in contact with. And just remember, I love you. <laughs>